Hello there, I'm going to take you through a tour of two individual controls in the NetAdvantage Windows Forms toolbox. One of them is called Win Combo, the other control is called Win Combo Editor, and you'll find them here. And the component name or the control name found in the Visual Studio toolbox is Ultra Combo and Ultra Combo Editor. So there's differences between these two controls, even though they're named very similarly, and I'm going to take you through a little tour of both of them. So I have here a data set and binding source table adapter that will be used to pretty much provide the data model for these two controls that I will show you. So I'm going to first start off with Ultra Combo, drag and drop that onto the form, and you can go into the properties window and set properties on this directly through here, or we can also use the smart tag which conveniently contains the majority of the properties that you'll need to set to get started. So first thing we want to do is set it up with a data source. So if I'm going to click this drop down, I want to hook it up to the products binding source. So I'm basically hooking up to the products entity within the database Northwind. So it contains a list of products. And what you want to do now is once we're bound to that, we want to choose a display member. So of the underlying data models properties, which one of these guys do you want to show in the text area of the combo? So that way you could identify the item. If you look at this data model, one that makes most sense, in my opinion, is the product name. And then you want a value member. Now, value member is which one of these guys here represents the key or the primary key that you wish to identify its uniqueness or selected state that you can so, so that you can do something programmatically with it. So product ID would be the case here. So that's what you can do. And now that we have this set up, there's a couple of other things that we could do, like you want like the drop down style. You could set up as a drop down or a drop down list. I usually set drop down list so that way you cannot edit inside the text area. However, you can set to drop down, and then you could have benefits such as the autocomplete mode, such as suggest, which is pretty much like whenever you go into any website nowadays and you start typing something in, and you get an immediate drop down list of items that start matching what you're typing. And the biggest thing about the Ultra Combo is that it's a multi column drop down that you can toss onto your form and just display some stuff. So I'm also going to remove the text properties so that way you don't get to see that in the little drop down area here when it's co collapsed. So if I just run this, I want to show you what it's like. So here it is, and if I click on the drop down, see the multi column drop down that I get, and I could select a value and I can also start typing stuff in. Let me just take a look at what kind of data we're dealing with here. So how about um, I just start typing some some stuff in. S A or S A C H A. So you see how I get like that autocomplete. Now the biggest thing that people are asking is, well, there's too many columns. How do I reduce the amount of columns? Now here's the thing: a multi-column dropdown is great when you want to provide a good user experience to your end user so that they're absolutely sure about what they're going to select because they have lots of columns used to identify whatever it is that they're selecting. However, there may be too many columns in this situation here. So what I will do is show you how to hook this up. So I am bound at design time. So in this case, I could do this through the properties window or you can do this through code. So let's take a look at the properties window, how this can be done. So I click on the combo. And what you want to do is locate the display layout. So I just want you guys to know out there that this is very similar to the WinGrid control. So if you're familiar with the WinGrid object model, it's pretty much the same thing. So display layout, bands. There's only going to be one band in this control, so don't think that it's a hierarchical. So band sub zero, which is products. And if you guessed it, that's right. You want to locate the columns collection, and then you just kind of flip through like. Uh, Okay, I want to show that one. I don't care about this one here, so you can go to the hidden property, hidden property. Maybe you want to keep some of this, maybe some of these guys. I could hide that one. You know, just to show you, maybe hide this one here. And we'll just leave it at that. So now if I run it, now it's a little bit more manageable right here. So that's that's how it works. And a couple of other things I want to show you. If 
we click on the smart tag and we go into the designer I wanted to show you that you can click on this band here and we can click on column arrangement overview and we could do the same thing that we normally do in WinGrid so this is amazing that you can do this here so let's design column arrangement now and I'm going to just double click and get rid of all these because what I'm showing you now is how you can kind of create a really fancy column arrangement so it, this is for those people that are kind of bored of having a grid or a drop down with multi columns that has all of its columns straight across the top but what I want to show you is how you can use the row layouts designer that exists with WinGrid also with the multi column combo so I want to drag product ID here and I'm going to put product name maybe next to it. How about I just change my mind, put it underneath it. And I'm going to put the supplier there, category up there, unit price. How about put unit price there? And how about we make this a little bit more fancy? I want to expand. So you notice the little square icons and the diamond icons. The square just gives it a column width, but the diamond is a span. So think of in terms of an HTML table. I'm going to span, 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 span right there. How about we just do the whole thing? And then we just keep stocking a few more items here. You could also span vertically and horizontally like I'm doing now. So units in stock, put right here. We'll span that guy right there. And then we'll put one here and one there. And let's, for good luck, we'll put this here and span it. Again, just to give you an idea of how to make your multi-column drop-down, really cool and fun to work with. So now when I run it, let's see what we get. Maximize it, when I click on it, now we have this really fancy drop-down here. So I want to select this guy, or I want to select that guy. And a couple of other things I want to show you. So go back to display layout. And as you guessed, override, just like WinGrid, look at a couple of these properties that we can set and that's the one I was looking for so as you notice there's a lot of properties here row spacing after let's do like uh, how about five let's start off with five for now and run it and I'll show you exactly what this does click on the drop down notice it it's a little hard to see but basically what I did was I, I made the rows spaced a little further apart so that way you can distinguish each row clearly so that's a property that you can set in both wind grid and multi column drop down so that's pretty much what that's pretty much some of the things that you know I think are very valuable so let's do 15 and make it really visible you can also set row spacing before or after, it, it all depends. But again, if you're familiar with WinGrid's object model, it's the same exact thing here. And run the application. And here it is. Now the rows are definitely spaced apart. So you know you're pretty much clear on what it is you're going to select. So I want to select this person here, that guy right there, and now it's selected. And then, if you wanted to know how to access this programmatically, you can, um, let's see if I just double click this here, just to show you some code. So you could do stuff like selected row, selected, basically selected row, that's, that's how you essentially work your way through the items of whatever the end user selected. I mean, you, could also, you always go to the um, value property. That's that's what you want to use. So value. You can always grab that. That's that's going to be your primary key. However, there are many use cases where people say, "Hey, well, the end user selected the row, right? And I would need to get one of the other cells that is not the value." Well, that's fine. Then you could you could either use value like this one here. So let me just comment it out so you just know it's there but then you want to do is grab you want to do something like this the selected row and let's say you always want to make sure it's not null right so you want to do something like you want to do something like this so 
So as long as there is a selected row, right? You want to start off with that. Then what you want to do is, and then the cells, and then let's say you want to do um, which one is it? Product. Ah, uh, let's say the product name. But but you get the hint. You can just do this with any one of your fields that you want to jump to dot value. And then don't forget to cast it, and that's how you would access this. So that's how you'd work with Ultra Combo. Now, let me take you through Ultra Combo Editor, and let's go grab Ultra Combo Editor, dump it onto the form. Now, there's a big difference between this one and the previous one. So let's start off by hooking it up to some data. So, data source products and the next thing we need to do is set the we need to set the value member and the display member but it's not really on here so we have to click on this and go to the property window value member is product ID and the display member is product name just like the other one and then we could set the other types of properties such as um, you know the drop down style or the, you know the uh, if you want it to be a display style rather whoops drop down style you want it to be a drop down list or if you want the same type of interaction as the other one that we did before so if I were to run this right now I'll show you what the biggest difference is the Ultra Combo Editor essentially is a simple drop down list, single column only, whereas this one is multi column and it's really fancy and you have the full blown power of the win grid arrangement part of the API at your disposal to give end users a really nice drop down. But you know, this is like a very simple, lightweight list. And, you've, you, and then this one here, you access it a little differently, so you have to access its value member. So so ultra combo editor dot value and you want to make sure that it's not null so do you know, a null check first that's how you access that guy right there so now that you know what these two controls do you can definitely make use of these and by the way you can embed both of these controls within the cells of WinGrid However, I do want to explain that if you're going to use a multi-column dropdown, then I would recommend that you do not use the regular Ultra Combo Editor. You want to use the Ultra Dropdown, which I'll cover in another video. The reason is you can definitely use this one, it's just that the Ultra Dropdown is designed specifically to be used within WinGrid and give you the same exact functionality as Ultra Combo here. And it's much it's like much more lightweight to use the ultra dropdown in WinGrid but if you're going to use an editor multi-com dropdown just thrown onto your form not in WinGrid then ultra combo is the one you want to use however ultra combo editor can be used on the form as you see and can be included in WinGrid the only difference is that this particular control here the ultra combo editor gets assigned to the column dot value list property this control, as well as any other Infragistics editor control, gets assigned to the column dot editor control property. Two different properties of how you hook these editors into the grids column. I'll go more into detail in another video that details this kind of stuff. So now you know what these two guys are. If you ever had any questions on what's the difference, well, now you know. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.